Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This month of June, we've spent time talking about transforming our hearts. We've talked about transforming our hearts to answer the call to go out and to tell the world what Jesus has done and to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about transforming our hearts to be like Jesus and to follow his steps, to show his compassion, his acceptance, his forgiveness, and most especially his love with all the world, but especially those whom society has rejected. Last week, we talked about transforming our hearts towards ourselves and about what it means to have some self-compassion to rest and to rejuvenate so that we are ready to go back out into the world. And today we wrap up this series about transforming our hearts for service as we talk about the cost of discipleship. This cost of discipleship involves sacrifice. It involves sacrificing ourselves for what we want and what we desire. We sacrifice ourselves trusting that when we do sacrifice, God will provide what we need. God will provide what we need so that when we go out into this world, we are prepared, we are ready to share the good news of what God has already done for us. And so today we do invite Pastor Joe Juarez to come up and to share the good news of what Free the Girls is doing They are counting the cost of discipleship. They are taking that discipleship, and they are sharing that good news with folks across the globe. So, Joe, we invite you to come on up. Church that day, I told my wife, I don't know what this guy's going to do, but I'm ready to go with him. (laughs) I was was so inspired by what he, he was, he was just so passionate about knowing that he had to go somewhere and do something. And I was ready to go with him. Well, I didn't go with him. But uh, we found out about a year later that he had gone to Mozambique and, again, didn't know what he was going to do. He was walking around the market one day, and he came across a guy that had an umbrella, a big umbrella. He had bras on the end of it, and he was spinning it. And he, Dave went up to him and said, what are you doing? And the guy says, I, I sell bras. Uh, he said, they're, they're like gold here. In Mozambique, there's no manufacturers of bras. Um, something that that is a normal thing to actually have and he this guy found that you could sell bras and make a a good living at it Dave was intrigued and he he called up some people and he said hey why don't you send some bras to me I want to see if there's something behind this or if this if this is something that works so he got a he got I think a couple of boxes worth of bras sent to him and he came and he found out that absolutely bras were um, very, very valuable in, in Mozambique. And so he had already started working in the trafficking part of, of, of in, in a missions kind of capacity, doing s- some things in trafficking. So he found an organization that, that basically rescues women who had been trafficked. And his thought was, well, let's give them an economic opportunity to, to change their lives and, and sell bras and start their own little business. And that's exactly how it started. And it started off really, really small. And he kept, if, if he talked people into going up to Mozambique, he would say, hey, bring a suitcase of bras with you. And so it, it started small, and there was, a, there was a lady named Kimba who was, is a co-founder of Free the Girls, and she was storing bras, collecting them in Denver, in, in her garage, and all of a sudden, the word got out, and she got more and more and more bras, and, and it, was, it was something that she was like, I mean, she started getting overwhelmed with bras, um, but she was sending them off to Dave, and Dave was, was working with these women, and it was all working out pretty well. Well, somehow, CNN heard about this, and they did a documentary about Free the Girls, and at that point, it just exploded. And Kimba in Denver was like, I can't do this. I can't, I, I don't have enough room. And 
funny thing is that we had just purchased that building, um, Pioneer Lumber, which is a warehouse, <laughs> and that's where our church was going to be. And so Kimba and Dave called up my pastor, Greg Arthur, and said, do you guys think you could store some bras in there? You know, we don't need a lot of room. Don't need a lot of room, but maybe you can store some bras, and, you know, and then when we're ready, we'll send them. And so immediately he said yes, because here we had a huge warehouse and a tiny little church, um, so we had room. So oh, we... Um, so that's, that, so that's how I got involved with Free the Girls. Just as a volunteer, basically, when bras came in, um, we, would, we would do a, what was called a packing party where we'd kind of separate the bras and put them in boxes and then eventually ship them off. Um, part of the story is that that documentary, there was a guy in Germany who, was, who owned a, uh, a shipping company who was in Germany one day and turned on the TV and saw this documentary on CNN. And he owned a shipping company, and he thought, well, geez, maybe I can help these guys. So he called up Kimba in Denver, and, and somehow they, they all worked out to where he now said, hey, when you get enough bras, send them up to Chicago, we'll store them, and then when you have enough for a shipping container, we'll ship them off there. And it was just amazing how God worked. God worked all these things in, in crazy, crazy ways, to, to where we're at now. And so where we're at right now is we are a international nonprofit based in beautiful Chesterton, Indiana. And we have now collected well over two million bras. Two million bras have come to Chesterton from all over the world. I would say 90% 90, 90 of them probably come from within the United States, but I'm getting bras every day from Somewhere, somewhere else, whether it's Hong Kong or Taiwan, um, the United Kingdom, Germany, everywhere. They're all coming to Chesterton. And so that's, that's, what free, that's how Free the Girls got started, and that's kind of where we're at now. And, and so what we do is we come alongside women who've been trafficked, and we, we provide them a path to what we call true freedom. Because these are women who've, who've had no freedom. Their freedom has been taken away from them. And we want to help them integrate, reintegrate back into their communities. And the bra thing is just one small part of it. There's so much more that we do and, and what we will be doing to, to help these women reintegrate into, back into their communities. And what I can tell you is that it's been wildly, wildly successful. Um, the stories, I, I, unfortunately I live a life where I hear a lot, a lot of bad stories about trafficking and I won't repeat them because they're, you know, they're, they're something that once you hear them, you'll never forget them and, and, and I don't want to do that to you. Um, but what I will tell you is that these women are thriving, thriving in their communities because individuals took the time to send a bra to Chesterton, Indiana. It's just truly amazing the stories that, that generationally were changing the lives of not just these women, but their families and their children. And, and it's just so amazing to hear how these women are just thriving. They're buying land, they're, they're building houses. These are things that, I mean, you're talking about a woman who was basically shunned and ostracized in her community, and she's now buying land. So something like that that happens in Mozambique is unheard of. But it all happens because an ordinary person decided to get involved. And that's what we want to talk about all the time. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. And it doesn't matter where you're at, who you are, what you do, you can do amazing things if, if you decide that that's what, what you wanna do. And Free the Girls is just a perfect example of that. We are, our, our goal um, for true freedom is measured through the economic freedom 
restored health, social well-being, education, and opportunities for a different hopeful future. That's what we want. So like I said, the bras are very, very important, but they're just a small part of what we're doing. In fact, um, you'll be the first probably group of people that, that, I've, that I've told this to. We've been so successful at collecting bras that we're about to sell, tell people to stop sending us bras. We've, I have three years worth of inventory in, in, in here in Chesterton and up in that Chicago warehouse. We've been so successful at collecting bras that we're ready to tell people to stop sending bras. And we're going, we're, we're shifting into a, into a, to, we'll always have, we'll always, we'll, we'll always collect bras because you can't tell people to stop and they'll just stop. <laughs> they still will send in bras. But the other thing that's happened is we have uh, a dear friend of mine who works with Free, with Free the Girls. There's five employees of Free the Girls, and, and Pam was the original inventory manager here in Chesterton. Well, her family moved out to California, so she, she followed where her kids were and her grandkids were, and she's the director of strategic partnerships, so she is contacting uh, companies and, and telling the story of what Free the Girls is, and they're now sending bras. So I receive bras from Haynes, Airy, Title IX, Adore Me, all these bra companies are sending us brand new bras. So now we're finding that we have so many bras that we can now start telling individuals that you don't necessarily have to send us your bras anymore. And we want you to be involved still, but bras are, are we got that part handled. <laughs> so we're, we're excited because we're, we're about to embark on a whole new reintegration process with these women. Because we found that you could give them ec economic opportunities, but there's so much more that they also need. And, and that's some of the things that we're going to be providing. And it's education. It's, it's uh, employment, um, uh, teaching, teaching them how to, to, to run a business, start their own business. Because our goal is for, for women to be involved for about two years. And then we graduate them out of Free the Girls, and typically they start their own, their own little business. And it's not necessarily selling bras. So we've got lots and lots of ideas and things that we're going to be doing, but we're, we're just excited that we've been so successful that we're, we're now moving, not away from bras, but we're, we're moving away from bras being the absolute center of what we do. Um, and, and bras have, have, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, bras were the thing that, that made it very easy for, for people to get involved. Because I would imagine, looking at the women here, Every one of you probably have five, ten bras that you never wear and sitting in a drawer somewhere. And those are the people that send us these bras. Um, it was very, very easy. It was very, very easy for that to happen. Now, I'm not saying it was, I mean, it's easy, but it's still amazing what these women or what these people do. Because you collect the bras and then you have to put them in a box and then you have to pay for the shipping. Because we don't, we, we can't pay for the shipping. And it's just crazy. I, every box I see, how much it costs to ship bras to us, and it's, it's a lot of money. I think the average box is now $20, $30, $40 just to send the bras to us. So anyway, there's, there's, there's lots of wonderful, wonderful things happening. Um, but one of the reasons that bras were so successful as well for the women in Mozambique is that they didn't, when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're selling a bra, you're not, you don't have to deal with a, a male, a, a, a man. And so these are women that have been through trauma and, and amazingly terrible things. And for them to be able to start a business and not have to deal with men was also very, very valuable. So, um, so I, I, I don't know how long I've already been speaking. I, I could speak for hours about this, but... Um, yes, yeah, I was going to, I was going to tell you. So... The whole graduation process, um, about two years ago, right around Thanksgiving time, I had the opportunity to go to Costa Rica, which is one of the countries that we work in. Uh, go to Costa Rica and, and, and celebrate the women that were graduating out of the program. 
and it was just the most amazing thing. It was, it was an awful, awful thing, and it was amazing all at the same time, so it was, very, it was just very difficult. But I went to, I went to Costa Rica, which is, um, you know, as far as third world country, I wouldn't even call it a third world country. They're, they're, they're pretty progressive, and they got some wonderful things happening in their country, but I didn't see that part of the country. I went into a place called the Red Zone. That's where our location is. And it's about an eight square block of despair, right in the heart of San Jose. Um, I had a, a girl that was about this tall. She's, she's American from, from Colorado, but she's living in Costa Rica now. Um, I, she kind of looked like Reese Witherspoon. And she was my bodyguard. She literally was like, because she'd been already so well known in this red zone, as long as I was with her, I was fine. She told me, take your ring off, take your watch off, because they'll just rip it right off you. And I was, I was fine because I had, I had her with me. And, and it was, um, but I, I, the, the despair that I saw was things that I had never seen before. You know, we, we, get, we, we sometimes think that the world we live in here is the world, and it's, it's not. It's, it's not at all. Um, we are so blessed to, to live where we live. Um, but so to go into Costa Rica, I was able to see the women who had successfully gone through this program and to see how confident they were and so excited about their future and to see um, what their plans were. They were all, they all had really amazing plans and they were all about to embark on something new. And then I also got to meet women who have just started the program and to see the difference between the women who were graduating and the women who were starting the program was heartbreaking because again there's so much trauma involved that these women are they're just they they don't even know what to do with themselves and now i i hear the stories and hopefully i'll get to be, go back to now help help the celebrate the women who I met two years ago starting the program who were going to graduate. And it was, it's, just, it's just amazing to go meet the women. And with a name like Juarez, I should be able to speak Spanish, and I can't. So, but I told these women that when I come back, I'm going to be able to have a conversation with you. So I've been working on that a little bit, but i got a lot more work to do. Um, but how can, what can you do? Well. You have a unique opportunity because all the work that happens right now is happening in Chesterton. When I speak to somebody in Noblesville, Indiana, it's hard to say, hey, come on up and help us pack bras. It's, you know, it's, it's very difficult. But you all are right here in Chesterton, and we have, we continue, I, I receive about 30,000 bras a month right now still. Um, and we have monthly packing parties. We, we call them parties. We try to have fun because there's not a lot of fun in traffic in the trafficking world. But we try to have fun with this opportunity to come and help, to get involved. Um, so about once a month, we, we have packing parties. The next one, I already know the date, is July 18th. It's a Tuesday night. Uh, 5 o'clock we start. We usually go from about 5 to 7. And we'll have some fun little snack or something. Uh, I used to feed. I used to feed them, but man, it got to be so hard to 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 do that. But we'll have some snacks. But I would invite you to come. Doolin Community Church, which is right behind Strax, used to be Pioneer Lumber. Pioneer Lumber still operates out of that. Um, but um, five o'clock, we, we we basically, I fill up these gigantic boxes. They're called Gaylords. Uh, every, every day I go in, I take a box and I empty it into this Gaylord. So uh, when we have a packing party, I'll pull all these boxes out and then we basically are just going through these bras, sorting them basically just on quality. If they're brand new with tags, they go in one box. If they're your ordinary everyday bra that's nice and someone could sell it, it goes into another box. And then if they're, they're not good at all and they're stretched out or they're stained or whatever, we throw them in a recycling box and we try to recycle those things. So we give you, I'm giving you a great opportunity to be able to come 
and assist us in some way. Prayer is probably the best way that you can help because we know the power of prayer. We are a faith-based organization, and we know, we know that the injustices that God sees are, are heartbreaking to God as well. But he also knows that there are people that, that will do something about it. And so I invite you to, prayer, uh, to pray for free the girls and the women in our program. Um, and then the last one is always money. You know, everything that we do costs a lot of money. We have something called a seed collective where we ask someone to, to, to come in with us and make a monthly donation. You know, it could be $15 a month. There's some that give us two or $300 a month. But on our website, freethegirls.org, you have the opportunity to join that seed collective. And, you know, the, our, our logo is, is the, uh, the dandelion, and we know that dandelions grow because something blows their seeds and they spread. And so our seed collective is that idea that I'm telling you about it. And I have Liz and Scott here as well. And Gene, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, they're kind of like my evangelists uh, for Free the Girls in Chesterton. Um, they're wearing their Free the Girls shirts all the time, and they're talking to people about Free the Girls. And they are just uh, amazing. They're, they, they were just honored as our, our, our amazing volunteers um, because they, they do so much. But that's the Seed Collective. That's the, 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 the Holy Spirit blowing the, the ideas around of what Free the Girls are. You know, we've been, in, we've been in Chesterton now, Free the Girls, almost 10 years. But really, for the first seven years, we really didn't talk about it a lot. But we're really now starting to reach out and talk about what we're doing because we are now completely based in Chesterton, Indiana. And we know that there's amazing things happening all around Chesterton, and we just want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of, of the, the community that we know has a heart for 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 helping and so I thank you for the opportunity to come here and speak to you um, I, I just ask that you consider um, in some way participating because again ordinary people do extraordinary things when they come together so I'd like to end with a prayer well I'm sorry oh yeah, again, because we're kind of going away from the idea of collecting bras, um, we do, I mean, we have collection boxes at Red Cup Cafe and at 219 Tap Room, which my wife owns. Um, um, but yeah, you can, and, and right outside our door, we have big collection box. So yeah, we'll still collect bras. We'll absolutely still collect bras, but, but we're, we're good on that side. <laughs> um, we, we, we need help in, 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 in other ways at this point. But I'd like to end it with a prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, um, this beautiful place, this beautiful group of people. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to come and speak to them about Free the Girls. We know that the, the injustices that, that are happening all over the world uh, break your heart, but we know that you're also with the Holy Spirit touching each and every one of us to somehow get involved in the many, many injustices, not just with three of the girls. We just ask that you continue to prod us and push us and, and, and guide us, direct us to what you want us to do because we know that we have tremendous power through your Holy Spirit. We have tremendous power through you and your son, Jesus Christ. We just ask that you continue to, to, to help us, guide us and direct us to the ways that you want us to, to work. And thank you so much for all the things that you're doing all over this community, this state, this country, and the world. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Today we hear Jesus say, those who love their lives will lose it, and those who lose their lives for my sake will live forever. 
Where can we lose our lives in supporting women who have been trafficked, in supporting organizations that care for those? Where can we lose our lives to share the good news that Christ has given grace to all people regardless of what has happened to them, but especially to those who are hurting most on the inside? Where can we lose our lives so that others might live and live abundantly? Because we ourselves have received the most abundant life there ever has been and ever will be, and we receive that life through Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. We invite you to uh, turn to the screens in a moment, and we will sing our hymn of the day, which is so appropriately, How Clear is Our Vocation, Lord. Vocation being that which God calls us to. So we invite you to stand as you wish, or you are able and to join. <laughs> 